Hello, I'm Zach Attack, and let's talk about the code editor in Tick80. So I've loaded up a file, just any file as an example, doesn't matter. If you're in the console like this and you press escape, it will usually go to the text editor. If it doesn't, you'll see that the code editor here is F1. So pressing F1 will switch to the code editor. Even if you're in console and you press F1, it goes to the code editor. All right. Now, the first thing to know is these buttons up here. That's cut, copy, paste, undo, and redo with their usual shortcuts. The only one that might not be the same as in every application is redo. That's control Y. In some cases, it's control shift Z. It depends on the software, but in this case, it's control Z and control Y. So cut control X, as you would expect. Copy, Control C, you can paste with Control V. You can actually, if you are so inclined, you can paste into a plain text document or any place you want to keep your code snippets or whatever. You can paste in there as well and it'll work perfectly fine. You'll notice that the tabs in this one are super wide because that's the tab setting for this text editor, even though in Tick80 tabs are only a single space wide, but it comes down to the same thing. The next button, this one and this one is font and shadow, that looks wise. Then the next most important button is run, control R. That's the same as typing run in here and it'll run your game. You can also click this button to run your game or press control R like it says, which would also run your game. The next button over is a little bit of a tricky one. I think this was mostly put in for mobile users or people with a touch screen, and that is drag. If we click this, you'll see the button is highlighted. Now if I drag the mouse, which is a little hand, hi. Now if I drag the mouse, it scrolls. So if you quickly need to get to a particular piece of code on Android, for instance, where you have a touch screen, this can be convenient. If you're on a PC, even without this option selected, you'll see it says right mouse on that top bar. You can at any time hold the right mouse button and scroll, but the scroll wheel works as well. Now the more interesting ones. This one over here is find, which is control F, like you would expect. Pops up a little find bar at the top, type what you need. Uh, I don't know. Let's see if this, there's nothing named debug. In my thing, let's use center. There's my print center call. Pressing up and down on the, the arrow keys. We'll scroll to the next match until it reaches the last one and then it won't do anything. Pressing up goes previous until it finds the first one and then it won't do anything. And if you find the one you're looking for and you press enter, the find function goes away and the text is selected. You can also select the name of a thing. I just double clicked there to select the whole word. Double click selects the word or the variable or the whatever. Then if I press control F to find, it auto fills that. So if I want to see where else I used this active player thing, that's a quick way of doing that. And then pressing up shows me everywhere that I have that word written the way it is in the text that's in the find box, which was what I selected. Next up, oh, pressing escape cancels, obviously. Next up is go to. Now there aren't line numbers on the left here. See that, see that little symbol, that little bookmark? I'll get to this. We do have line numbers, like any good coding program. It doesn't display on the left, like code editors normally do, but they do exist. So I'm on line 261. If I want to go to, to say line 250, just type line 250 in here, but pressing enter so it goes to the beginning of that line and allows me to continue editing as normal. So if you break something, what's a good example? I'm just going to do this so that when I run my game, it breaks. Your debug error will say that. That's a line number, 249. Go to 249, here somewhere. Uh, there, and I can fix it. 
Okay, that's how GoTo works. Every time I save, the file it pops over that bar, so that's a little annoying when demonstrating the bar itself, but mm, can't be helped, I guess. I'm a compulsive saver. I hit Control S in my sleep. The next button, this is an interesting one. So these are bookmarks. If you are anywhere in code and you would like to return to this quickly, press Control F1 and it adds a little bookmark at the beginning of the line. You can also click in this margin to turn it on and off. Now if I open the bookmarks bar, there's the line I just bookmarked. You can also, and then you can just click on the one you want or up and down and enter to get to the right one. You can also, if I have a different line bookmarked, you can press F1 to pop between the two. There is this weird bug where it selects the text in between. So normally I just suggest moving before you start typing just in case it does that. But you can very quickly pop between different spots in your code this way. And you'll see both of those are listed. I can use the up and down arrows to go between them. Generally, while you're coding, you would want to keep your hands on the keyboard. It's faster that way once you get used to it. If you can avoid using the mouse, that is best case scenario. That's why Vim keybinds exist. Clicking on the bar takes it off here. This doesn't update while it's open. So removing a bookmark isn't going to disappear, but it'll still find it. And as soon as you open it again with control B, it'll only have the other one that we have that's selected. And let's remove this one for completion. And then the last one, also a fun one, is outline. Now, in a lot of text editors or a lot of code editors, you have the ability to hover over a function name or hold control over a function name, and it gives you a peek of the definition. It also might have the feature where you can start typing the name of a function and it'll autocomplete. Unfortunately, Tech 80 doesn't have those features, but what it does have is an outline view. So over here, I can see that I used this print center function. So if I want to find it, control O or click the little outline icon in the corner, shows me the names of all my functions in the order that they appear in the file. So we're looking for print center. It happens to be the last function in the file. So I can click on that or if you use the arrow keys, it'll actually pop to each individual function as you go. There's print center, press enter to select it, and then carry on with whatever I'm doing. Like I said before, a fast way of finding where this function is being used, its references, is selecting the name of the function, press control F, and then using the arrow keys to find that name. It'll also, as it does here, find it in comments because it doesn't distinguish between the text matching a comment and a function. Otherwise, if it didn't match comments, I would get very lost in my code quickly. Now, because it doesn't have autocomplete and it doesn't have IntelliSense or any of those fancy IDE features, it sometimes happens that you're using a function and you don't remember what you're supposed to pass to it. Where's an example? Let's find... Let's find somewhere I was using print center. Here we go. Print ready, print center ready. Print center is just a little function we wrote during our tutorial to be able to tint center text on screen. But now I know I can send a bunch of stuff to print center, but how do I remember what they are? Is a little key combination, not a key combination, but a little combination of actions that I have discovered work well. First, bookmark where you want to write the thing. Then outline. Oh, you can type in here to filter the list of functions. That works as well. Print center. There's my function. Copy this line, the function definition. Then press F1 to pop back to where you wanted to use it. And above your code line, put that as a comment. You might have seen as I was demonstrating that I did this in another function. So now I can see this takes text in the Y position, in the scale, and then the X offset. A lot of times, I just leave it there. It's a comment. It's not going to hurt anyone. We are miles away from using up all the cartridge space or the text space that we need. Okay, next up, syntax highlighting. Let me just find a safe space for this near globals. Okay. Variables are highlighted. So strings are yellow. Literals are 
blue. You can change these colors in the config if you want to, but this is what they are by default. Uh, true and false are highlighted in orange because they are kind of like keywords. Keywords like local or function or if then else are highlighted in orange. Easy way to see if you misspelled something. API references, so sprite or print are highlighted in green. The problem is your own functions, so we know print center is the name of a function. This is not highlighted and it's also not auto completed in any way. So you'll just need to remember how it's spelt or open this thing and go check how it's spelt and then press escape so you don't lose where you are. Something else that bugs me a little bit is the fact that Lua's built-in functions, like there's an entire class of math operations, math.random, math.min, or math.max, none of this is highlighted. So if you do need to use these, you can look them up. Lua is a reasonably simple language. It's like the Lego blocks of coding, I usually say. So there's not much to remember, but knowing that math.min exists and remembering what you're supposed to pass to it in what order to make it work, a little different. So it is useful to have those open on the side in, in the browser or print yourself a cheat sheet. Anyway, I think that pretty much covers everything. TKT has some features that allow you to get your stuff done quickly, like this, this outline tool. When I figured out this was a thing, after using Tick80 for months, I only discovered this. And it is an absolute lifesaver to see how things are spelled, find them quickly, and so on. Uh, last year at some point, when they added this bookmarks feature, it's, it made such a difference to my productivity. So use the tools you have. There's no autocomplete, there's no fancy stuff like that, because Tick80 doesn't want you to be diving through menus and get bogged down with configs and preferences and settings and things being different every time. If we keep it simple, then it'll always be the same. And once you get used to that simplicity, it is very satisfying to code something in Tick80. And it's fun because the main reason we're doing this is to have fun.